Hello and welcome back to the Snap Revise YouTube channel. My name's Amy and for this video we're going to talk about wider reading, what it is, how you can do it and how it can help you boost your grades. Wider reading is something that you've probably had recommended. I know on this channel we recommended it and on our TikTok and we often get questions about how you actually do it. The point of wider reading is to develop your knowledge and make you a much more competitive student when it comes to applying to university and to answering those essay exam questions. This is going to be more work on top of your revision but it will give you an advantage and I think it's really nice to develop your core learning with things that are actually happening in the real world. It kind of solidifies those concepts in your head better compared to when you just keep on like regurgitating the specification content. So one of the amazing things about wider reading is the huge array of sources that you can look to to extend your knowledge. One thing you do need to make sure that you're taking account of though when you're doing a wider reading is making sure that you are getting to the source of the information itself. Before I give you some ideas of where to look for extra information regarding your specification, it is worth noting down that you should be able to tell the difference between primary data, so that is data that scientists have produced themselves and published, compared to data which talks about primary data but isn't primary data itself. So podcasts, documentaries, they will all be discussing information that has come from a scientific journal. Now the reference you want to make there isn't the podcast or the documentary itself, but the scientific paper. I'll talk about this a bit later on in the video when we come to the critical analysis, but for now that's just something that you will want to be thinking about. So let's go through our list, starting at the top nice and easy with online libraries like JSTOR or Google Scholar. These are online platforms where you can browse through academic journals that have been written from the 1900s up to the modern day. Your school will probably have access to JSTOR. Unfortunately this is a paid for service which means that your school pays and you get access to the full paper rather than just the abstract. Some papers on Google Scholar will be freely available so you can download the PDF. Luckily at an A-level stage you probably won't need to be accessing the full paper just because the in-depth analysis of that isn't as beneficial to you now as it will be at university. So just being able to read the abstract should be okay. If you can read a full PDF PDF, then that's really beneficial because you'll get to see what an academic paper looks like because it's a very different way of writing, it's scientific writing rather than writing like you would do in English for example. Your school will probably have a digital library too which will have digital copies of books and magazines all great sources of information. Next up we have YouTube. This is a fantastic platform because there are so many videos, I want to say millions of videos, but there are so many that you can watch and use to extend your scientific knowledge. Content creators are putting out super high quality stuff nowadays and so the watching is very easy because you've got nice graphics and illustrations and great presenters who are able to articulate scientific concepts in a way that makes sense to a general audience. You don't have to be a specialist to watch these videos. Here at Snap Revise we are actually working on just this so I have started to create a series of videos that help to put your specification learning into a much wider context and give you a much better background into some of the things that you're learning in your lessons. If you want to check out these videos, click through to this link just up here, which will take you to our Alkanes video, which is the most recent video in this series. Moving on from YouTube, we have documentaries which you can watch on YouTube, but they are also available on other streaming platforms like Netflix or Amazon. I think documentaries are a really great starting point for finding out about the science that they're talking about within the documentary. For example, the Attenborough documentaries we all know and love so much. What you might not know about documentary filmmaking is that a lot of the time they liaise with scientists to present the scientists' findings analyze the information that the documentary is presenting and then look for that original source of information. This is what you will need to do for all of these sources that I'm recommending. Finally, we have podcasts. In the last 24 months since COVID began, podcasts have really taken off because people have discovered that they're actually a pretty cool way of consuming content. Reputable scientific podcasts are, I think, the best thing in the entire world. I'll pop some that I personally love up on the screen, but there are so many for you to browse through. I would recommend that you have a listen to a few and try and find the one that presents the information in a way that makes sense to you. 
You might prefer to listen to information in a more humorous perspective. In that case, I would recommend The Infinite Monkey Cage. That is such a fantastic podcast. I love it so much. Or you might just want to listen to the facts and get straight to the content itself. Whatever works best for you is the best option. So definitely give different podcasts a go and see how you get on. I'm actually a huge fan of podcasts and I've started listening to other podcasts in subject areas that I didn't really need to be looking at for university. For example, languages podcasts, there are some great languages podcasts to help you try and get to grips with speaking a different language or history podcasts. You've got true crime podcasts, the list goes on. So if you haven't dipped your toes into the world of podcasts yet, please give it a go. It's such a fantastic source of information. So now you have some ideas of where you can source your extracurricular content. Here are some key things that you might want to think about before you go ahead and use them as references. So right at the top of the list and really, really, really important is how does this information link to your specification? This is really important because to be able to flex your wider reading, you need to make sure that the link between that reference and your specification is clear to you in your head. There's also not much point at this stage in committing things to memory that won't benefit you in the exam. So to make sure that you are linking to your specification, I would say that when you're taking notes about your source, you make a clear point in the notes, whether it's in a red pen or you highlight it, exactly which part of the specification it relates to and how it relates to that part of the specification. It's that kind of way of thinking that you need to make sure you've got down and solidified before you start to show off your wider reading. Next, we need to think about how old the source is. It's always best to reference things that are the most recent and up-to-date piece of information about that subject area. You don't want to be using a paper that has since been refuted or has since been been shown to not be accurate because the way in which the science was carried out wasn't 100% correct. So the most recent piece of information is generally the best. Number three, think about who is supplying the information. It's always good to consume content that has been made by creators who have a good background, they're reputable and they're a reliable source of information. The scientific paper itself, you want to make sure that the author has got academic affiliations and that you can also find previous papers of theirs. Academic researchers should have evidence of previous papers they've published. If they're a first time publisher, then have a look at their qualifications, what degree they have, whether they have a PhD, all of these things should give you a good idea of whether that is a useful and a reputable source of information. So now that we're thinking about these three things, we can get into performing an A-level critical analysis. This is a really important stage of wider reading because it's a way of fact checking and solidifying in your mind that the reference you've chosen to go with is a good reference to use. You need to clarify to yourself what the source is presenting and whether there are any issues with the information that it's giving you. So for the purposes of this critical analysis section, I'm going to be referring to our information source as a paper. Like I said earlier on in the video, it's always best if you can find the academic paper itself that talks about the information you want to relate to your specification rather than using the, the name of the documentary or the news website that you found this information on. So if you can access the full paper, read it through fully. So read the abstract, go into the introduction, the methods, results and conclusion. We're going to then try and see if we can write a sentence or a paragraph that kind of summarises what the paper has just presented to you. This is essentially like the blurting technique of revision where you have been looking at your notes and then you sit down with a blank piece of paper and try and recall all the information that you can remember about those notes. Now, when you come to university, more analysis will be required at this stage, but thankfully at A-levels, you can probably just stop at the point of knowing what the paper said and how this relates to your specification. If you're doing an EPQ, you might want to take your critical analysis um, a few stages further, but for your revision, this should be fine. The one thing that you need to have on lock is that you know where this paper links to your specification. I cannot stress the importance of this enough. Nobody has special insight into academic papers. It's all based on your knowledge and learning to date. So if you have any gaps that are stopping you from fully comprehending what this academic paper is saying and how it relates to your biology learning or your chemistry or physics, then just Google it. The internet's there for a reason and nobody is gonna know that you had to use Google to fill in a few little gaps here there. If you want to see a more in-depth critical analysis then let us know in the comments but I think what I've recommended to you so far in this video is more than enough for a level wider reading. 
When you go to university, your lecturers should do some work with you on performing critical analyses, so that will just be something that comes later on. So that's wider reading. When done correctly, it can take your A-level learning to a whole new level and develop yourself as well as a scientist. Having an understanding of science beyond your specification is such an amazing thing to have. I don't think you quite appreciate it at A-level, but when you come to university and beyond, you will feel that having that extra knowledge will benefit you in so many ways. I'm sure that many of you might be interested in a career of research or in a job that is quite research intensive and requires you to have an understanding of the most up-to-date science. Good luck with your wider reading. Let us know in the comments how you get on. Don't forget to like this video if you found it helpful and please do consider subscribing to Snap Revise if you haven't already. We have loads of videos to help you with your A-level revision from tutor videos to online web classes as well as advice videos like this one.